Hello and welcome back. This is Greg French. Today we're going to look at subnet uh, class C IP address. Uh, this time we're going to take two bits from that last octet. And with two bits we're going to be able to create four networks. Uh, the reason we create four networks is the combination of those two bits is 00, uh, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And we'll show you how that uh, creates those four networks. You can see by this uh, packet tracer diagram, our first network over here is 192.168.1.0. We have slash with a 26 showing that we've taken two more bits uh, from that last octet. Coming up here, we've got another network, 192.168.1.64. Uh, again, with slash 26. Over here, we have the 128 slash 26. And then our last one over here is 192. And uh, we'll show you how we set this up. First, I'm going to go back to just your classful uh, class C uh, default subnet mass 255.255.255.0. We slash 24 up here showing that 24 bits, uh, these three octets of 8 bits each, are the uh, network portion of the IP address. And then we're using the entire last octet of 8 bits for our host range. And uh, this little table down here shows you 8 bits. Uh, starting from the 1 and going to the left, and we double until we get to 128. And if we add all these numbers together by setting them high with the corresponding uh, binary, we end up with the 255. Class uh, C again, 24. We have in this range for the host, this last octet, we have anywhere from 0 to 255. The 0 is reserved for network, and that 255 is reserved for broadcast. So that leaves us with 1 through 254 assignable IP addresses. These can be assigned to computers, nodes, devices, anything that needs an IP address. Using the, the subnetting, though, taking these two bits from this uh, last octet, we'll take the two higher order bits, the bit 128 and the bit 64. And you can see right away when we have two bits, we have four combinations for those two bits, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. The 00 would give us our first network uh, of 192.168.1.0. The second one here, if we set the 64 high and keep the 128 low, that sets uh, this last octet with the value 64, which is our second network. Uh, if we take the 128 and set it high and the 64 low, we get the 128. And then if we set them both high, we get number 192, which becomes our fourth network. You notice the other six bits will be the bits that will be assigned in the host range. These are all set for zero right now, but if we increment these, we can see that we can increment these six bits to the number 63, which is one less than our next higher order bit, 64. That gives you a zero for the network and a 63 for the broadcast, so our assignable uh, bits for this host range are 62, or 1 through 62. You'll find that we'll have 62 for the next three octets or the next three networks also. So now we have four networks uh, with 62 assignable IP addresses for each one of them. So for some networks this might suffice but uh, we do need to learn uh, this subnetting and this is a good example of just taking two bits from this last octet. The new subnet mask will become 255.255.255.192 with that 128 bit set high and the 64 bit set high. This tells the computer and any other devices such as routers or whatever that we have taken two additional bits in this last octet and these are going to be now part of the network. Uh, the last six bits will be the host and that's what the subnet mask is telling us. All of these bits are network bits including the first uh, three octets or 24 bits and then two more octet, two more bits here for 26 total and then that leaves the remaining six bits for assignable uh, devices or computers. So this is a pretty good diagram of how that, uh, how that sets up for just the four networks. Now looking at our, our uh, packet tracer uh, network here, you can see that we've assigned this 192.168.1.0 to our first network. We slashed it with 26 showing that we're using 26 bits for our network. We're taking that uh, first uh, assignable IP address and assigning it to our router. So we end up with 192.168.1.1. And then we're taking the last one, the 62, and assigning it to our PC. Moving up to our 
uh, first two routers that are connected to, to each other, we have another new network, uh, 192.168.1.64, and this is our second network. Uh, the next high high uh, uh, in the in the sequence here for the for the host, the next one would be 64 plus one or 65. That would be our first assignable IP address in this range, and then 26 would be our last one. And then moving on to our third network, uh, we we assign the uh, 192.168.1.128 as our third network, and our first assignable IP address then is one more plus the 128 or 129. And then the last one in that range is 190. And then for our fourth network, we're going to assign both those higher order bits for 192. So our network address is 192.168.1.192, and we slash that with 26, showing again we have 26 bits assigned for our networking address. And if we add one, uh, 1 to the 192, we get our first assignable IP address in that range, 193. And then the last one in that range would be 254. Uh, our subnet mask uh, for this uh, subnetting that we've done, 255.255.255, again, dot .192, showing that 128 and 64 have been set high for our new subnet mask. So this, uh, again, shows uh, what we can do when we just borrow two bits from that last octet. We can create four new networks and create... Uh, a network here that uh, gets not too complex yet, but we've got three routers and two PCs, all with different networks. Now if we go ahead and start assigning uh, these addresses and configuring our devices, the first thing is gonna, we're going to go up and come to is our first PC. We're going to assign that uh, .62 as its IP address, again using this new subnet mask, 255.255.255.192. And then our default gateway is that first router we're coming to, and we're going to assign the dot one to that. Now at our first router, again, we assign the uh, 192.168.1.1. That'll be our default gateway for our PC. That's that first router, again, with the same subnet mask. Moving up to the first serial port on that router, we're going to assign the dot 65 because we have a new network that we came to, and that's the 64. And then again, we're using that same uh, subnet mask. Now the second router that we come to is in that uh, 64 network and the last assignable is 162. We're going to give it that IP address. Again they have the same subnet mask. We come to our third or our second <coughs> our second serial port on that on that second router and we're going to assign it to with the new network uh, 128 and the first assignable IP address is 129 again with the same uh, subnet mask. Now, our third router and the serial port on it is going to be 190. Uh, and let's see, let me get back to the. Uh, <clears throat> this here, 190. 193. Yeah, 190 is the last of the uh, ones in that 128 range. And then our fourth network becomes the uh, 192, 126. Let's get back to see where we were here. Uh, so in our last uh, third router, the Ethernet port is going to be assigned uh, to 193. That's in the network 192. And again, if we add 1 to the 192, our first assignable is 193. Then we're going to go ahead and assign uh, the dot two five four to our PC, our second PC, uh, again with the same subnet, and the gateway is the 193, which is the first assignable above the 192, which is that network. So, <clears throat> looking at our network again, you can see we have the four networks. Uh, we've assigned IP addresses to each one of the devices, and now we want to try to ping from our first PC through the three routers. Uh, to our last PC. What we've done is we've set up uh, uh, router rip uh, version 2 uh, to take care of all of the uh, sharing of the different routes uh, back and forth between the routers so the routers are talking to each other and know each of the networks uh, that they're attached to and then they share that information with the other with the other routers. So when we ping, we ping from our first PC to our last PC 
and we're going to ping uh, the last PC's IP address 254. And you can see that we've got uh, returns from our uh, from our ping. Next, I want to do a trace route uh, through this, and the tracer is going to give us uh, a first ping to this first router, showing that we've hit the default gateway. And then going from this router, we're going to hit this uh, port on the second router, and you can see that that's this this one here. And then we go to the third router, which pings or hits this uh, IP address, dot one ninety, and then we come back to the PC, and you can see we hit we hit the PC at two five four. So using Tracer, uh, we can make sure that we're getting through all our devices and we're getting responses back, and you can see the delay times of the responses. So this uh, completes the Tracer and completes. Uh, borrowing the, or taking the two bits from the last octet, octet. A lot of people talk about borrowing bits, but we're really just taking those bits because we've now reassigned them uh, to our network portion. Also, something else that people talk about is the magic number. Uh, the magic number on this is uh, referring to the last uh, bit that we've borrowed. Well, we borrowed the 192 or the 128 and the 64. So now we're just moving our networks in an increment of 64. So you can see this one here is zero. This one, the first one is, or the second one is 64. And if we double 64, we increment by 64, we, again, we get to 128. And then 64 and 128, we get to the 192. So depending on what that last bit that we take is gonna be the number that we increment from one network to the next. They call that the magic number, but it's just that last uh, bit that we've taken which increments uh, our networks. Again, thanks for watching. Hope we're uh, getting something out of this. Uh, all you need to do is just uh, work on the subnetting, uh, looking at the bits borrowed, determining the number of networks uh, that you can create, and then trying to determine what the usable range is in each network. On the CCNA test, they do give you uh, some questions, and they'll give you like an IP address with the slash behind it for the number of uh, bits that are in the network and then you're supposed to determine if that's uh, what kind of an address is that is that a usable IP address or is it a network address or is it a broadcast address so you might have to work this out by hand uh, using again you can use the magic number or that number that uh, the last bit that was taken is going to increment these by that will we'll go through that we're going to look at the uh, 27 next uh, which is going to double again our network. So we're going to go from four to eight uh, next time. So thanks for watching. I uh, hope we're uh, learning something from this. Uh, thanks again. I'll see you next time.